Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Still with you and our edition of Cairo Local Time. And today, of course, we'll be discussing the latest uh, government efforts to empower the youth and uh, include them in the decision-making processes. Now, we're delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest for this afternoon, Dr. Hisham Abdis Salem, the Economic Development Advisor. Dr. Hisham, a very good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us and for your time today. And let me start uh, by speaking to you a bit about the state that has launched many initiatives and programs over the last uh, few years related to uh, youth empowerment. What is the value, uh, in your opinion, of gaining young people um, and launching such initiatives in order to cater for them? Indeed. Um the Egyptian government has been quite um, adamant to empower and include uh, the youth in the, the overall economic development process yes. in Egypt. Um, we all know that youth is the future, so um, uh, the, the, United Nations, um, uh, the United Nations program on uh, global development um, has been quite uh, clear that um, uh, the, the several youth development programs uh, around the world uh, are, are key to worldwide um, economic uh, rebound and, um, and, and development. In Egypt, our Vision 2030 has, uh, has made it very clear and it's quite, quite, quite uh, stated there clearly that uh, youth will be a very important and substantial component of the overall economic development and sustainability uh, objectives. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the key um, uh, objectives and activities that the Egyptian government has focused on is the empowerment of, of the youth, particularly in the, in the disadvantaged, uh, disadvantaged areas yes. in the, suburb, in the suburban uh, part of the country, mm -hmm. with focus on knowledge and education. Yes. Uh, the, the, the best uh, and, the, and the most effective youth development strategy needs to be built around education. Absolutely. And Doctor, you also mentioned a very important issue that, you know, empowerment uh, isn't just limited to a specific kind of empowerment. You mentioned education. Uh, of course, there's the political empowerment, economic as well as social empowerment, empowerment of the youth in different fields. Uh, the youth, of course, as you said, have a lot to give. How do you think that the state is capitalizing uh, on their, you know, natural capabilities, uh, being young and willing, you know, full of energy, willing to learn, willing to, uh, you know, partake of different uh, segments in society. How do you see uh, the government capitalizing on the youth? This is a very good question. Um, youth are, are a natural and national treasure and national wealth mm -hmm. uh, that is um, uh, substantial. And, and we all know that the pendulum has moved from the west to the east. Yes. The economic development pendulum, the world wealth, the leading uh, economic powers of the world moved from west to east simply, and one of the main reasons is the uh, uh, age brackets where those populations have majority of young people, and we've seen this everywhere. Mm -hmm. Young people are ambitious, are patient, uh, they are knowledgeable. I mean, look at your nephews or nieces or even kids, how knowledgeable they are, yes. um, having been born in the Internet uh, era, mm -hmm. uh, the millennials, the Generation X, the Generation Z. Um, uh, so so the, the, the government has realized uh, that particular advantage and have designed many uh, programs um, to, uh, to, to, to take advantage of that. And uh, one of, in, my, in my opinion, mm -hmm. one of the best programs that has been um, uh, developed is the um, Entrepreneurs' um, uh, Program to support uh, young people, yes. entrepreneurs, to, finance are, mm -hmm. to develop their ideas into viable commercial entities. Yes, absolutely. Doctor, that actually leads me uh, to my following question about, you know, the entrepreneurs, young support for the young entrepreneurs. Uh, the government has had several finance programs offering micro, small and medium enterprises, uh, financial uh, and as well as logistic support. Uh, how has this developed, you know, the youth and empowered them in an economic sense? Um, in that space, I can highlight four points. Mm 
Yes. The uh, traditional financial channels, by that I mean the bank, mm -hmm. have partnered with the government, with leadership um, from the government, to offer micro, SME, uh, and other tools to uh, young entrepreneurs. And above that, uh, the private uh, sector, yes. the venture capitalists in Egypt, I mean, maybe a lot of people don't know that, but, but we have one of the best exceptions of venture capital um, entities in, in Egypt. We have mm -hmm. a very robust venture capital industry in Egypt. Um, and that helps a lot with uh, startups and people with good ideas, young people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, such partnership models between the government, the private sector, and the um, uh, traditional financial institutions are, uh, is, is quite a, a good model. I have to highlight mm -hmm. that uh, regulations and the regulatory framework in that space needs to be revamped and developed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, to, to, to any entrepreneur, well, the first thing we look at is accessibility, the encouragement in terms of uptake of their products or, or services, and of course the technical support. The, the, the government, we have one of the best internet rates in the world and speed. So that will help a lot of entrepreneurs in that particular age where, where technology is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, doctor, also, you know, the state has launched many uh, in, uh, national mega projects uh, that have also been uh, job creation opportunities for uh, youngsters and for the youth. How do you see the different national mega projects that have been developed by the government over the last few years that have created many, many job opportunities for the youth? Sure. Um, I mean, uh, mega projects, national projects, are quite, uh, quite uh, an economic engine uh, by all means to all categories and to all, um, uh, to all parts of the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, young people in particular um, have, uh, have uh, an advantage where uh, they can take, uh, they can get into this particular, uh, this particular part of the economy much faster and easier mm -hmm. simply because uh, of their position uh, as knowledge economy uh, experts, the, the, the variety of sectors that will take advantage of those mega projects, if, if you're selling water or, or selling artificial intelligence, you still take advantage uh, because of the size of that project and the inclusion mm -hmm. um, from contractors to designers to, um, uh, to uh, agents to brokers to uh, teachers to you name it. Mm -hmm. Every professional will, will, with the right uh, education, the right capabilities, will definitely um, uh, take advantage of those huge projects. It's a, it's a huge revenue stream uh, for, the, for, the, for the nation and uh, great opportunities for everyone, including the youth. Absolutely. We've spoken about, you know, the state's role in youth empowerment uh, on an economic front, and you also mentioned the role of the private sector. Could you tell me a bit about, you know, the role that you see the private sector can play in empowering youth and providing them with opportunities from a young age? Um, the private sector has a, a very critical role in, this, in, those, in these hard times where uh, the world economy is... Uh, it's suffering, and in Egypt, we all know that we're going through uh, a period of development, and the development comes with a lot of challenges. Um, the private sector uh, has always been the engine of any economic development. In, in Egypt, our private sector is quite substantial, mm -hmm. um, quite substantial. Uh, the Egyptian economy is 75% built on services. So the space for, for development or for improvement is the industrial and agriculture um, part. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the services industry uh, industries is labor intensive. Yes. So a lot of young people would uh, take advantage of, of, of that particular fact that our economy has got a lot of opportunities in the service industry. Um, you and I are reading probably very recently about the sale of uh, state assets. Yes. Uh, and, and that's a very, very important part of, of the development where we are. We've sold, uh, the government has sold something close to $2 billion U.S. dollars worth of assets, and that is going to move into the private sector and its existing cash-flowing profitable assets. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge opportunity for, for, for young people. 
Um, we also have to we have to be clear that the private sector has a very important a patriotic role to support young people with financing, with training, with knowledge transfer, with um, partnership, with even 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 contributions uh, in, in the disadvantaged parts of the country, mm-hmm. uh, setting up institutions, microfinance, mini uh, finance, n- non-profit uh, institutions. Private sector will do all that. Absolutely. Finally, uh, Doctor, my final question. In your view, what would you say you know, differentiates Egyptian youth uh, here in Egypt from all other youth around the world? What, in your opinion, makes them stand out? Uh, well, that's a good question. Um, it's not my opinion, but that's my observation from what people tell me, non-Egyptians, mm-hmm. who live in Egypt, the foreigners or the expatriates who live in Egypt. Right. Uh, I can highlight two or three things. One, they are very eager to learn. Yes. Two, very resilient. They don't break ever, regardless. Uh, three, they are very, very, um, how can I say, it? Um, uh, helpful to, they, they like uh, uh, expatriates living in Egypt and they, they always jump to help anybody for nothing. So people, we call it in Egypt, Gidan. Mm, so yes. The young people in Egypt are very, sh- um, how do you how do I say that? Very hard. Mm-hmm. But, uh, They're they, chivalrous, they to, yes, yes. They come to action. They always come to help. Always Absolutely. ready to help. Anybody. Absolutely. So that is very unique. You won't find that I travel the world. Absolutely. You would never. But, uh, let me give you a quick story. Um, a, a gentleman from overseas, huge investor, was mm-hmm. coming to, to do business here and he had a car accident. His experience with young people who jumped to help and took him everywhere and helped, he decided to set up his business uh, in Egypt and he never left. <laughs> so, indeed, that is uh, that sounds pretty much like Egyptian youngsters. Indeed, uh, on that uh, lovely little tale, I'd like to thank you very, very much, Dr. Hisham Abdel Salam, our Economic Development Advisor. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us this afternoon and uh, for your insight. And uh, that's all the time we have for today's edition of Cairo Local Time. Ladies and gentlemen, we do hope you have enjoyed it. You're in the company of myself, Angie Meher. Many thanks for watching.